I think he's lucky he didn't get suspended for more than three games. Um, I was a proponent of him being suspended three to five games, and I stand by it. Uh, having said all of that, I want to applaud the kid for his apology, which I believe was incredibly sincere. He wasn't reading some statement from the university or some script or whatever. I think he spoke from the heart. I think he had an opportunity to reflect on his actions. And I don't think he should be judged moving forward. I don't think it's something that should affect his draft status. I don't think it's something that should allow us uh, to character assassinate the kid. He is a kid. He's going to learn from the experience. His future's bright. And I applaud him for what he, uh, how he's handled the matter in the aftermath of it all. Having said all of that, let me also make sure that I'm, I state that that fan and his conduct, it was reprehensible. He should be dealt with. And him choosing to forfeit, you know, visits or his appearances at future Texas Tech games for the rest of the season, as far as I'm concerned, is not enough uh, because his behavior was excessive. And it's unfortunate that a grown man would conduct himself the way that he was conducting himself and would feel the need to talk to a young man in that fashion, according to Mr. Orr, calling Marcus Smart a piece of, you know, whatever. The point is, is that it's wrong and that needs to be addressed. But please understand that on a separate incident, I'm looking at Marcus Smart and I'm not coming from a position of cynicism or denigration or anything like that. I'm rooting for the kid because I want the kid to succeed and I want him to do things that are going to facilitate his success. And there is no situation that you can explain where you are an athlete and you elect to get up and put your hands on a fan. There is certainly no way on earth, I don't care what anybody says, and I'm going to go here in this society that we live in, that you could be a young African-American and think that you can get up, turn around, walk two rows back, and put your hands on a middle-aged white guy, middle-aged anybody, but particularly a white guy. You're not winning that game. And so there's a lot of people within the African-American community that had a problem with my position. I want to make sure that I'm very, very clear in saying I don't give two cents what anybody says. You're not looking out for Marcus Smart if you try to explain away his actions, because what you're going to do is, for, is set the tone for others to follow, thinking that there's some kind of explanation as to why they would do what they did. The man should not have said anything to Marcus Smart. He should not have insulted him that way. That is absolutely correct, and he should be dealt with. But at the same time, it's going to be a cold day in hell before myself or anybody with any degree of sense gives tacit approval or beyond to a young athlete by allowing him to believe that there is justification for getting up and putting your hands on somebody because you didn't like what they had to say to you. You can't get away with that. And that's why Marcus Smart deserved his three-game suspension. I think he'll learn from it. I think he'll be better for it. But he deserved the suspension. Like you, I thought he would get more games. In fact, Saturday night, I thought Marcus Smart would be suspended for the rest of the regular season for the Oklahoma State program eight games and I did not think that was excessive because of all the points you just made here's the X factor I'm gonna ask you about this Marcus Smart immediately walked toward his bench had to be obviously held on by by some of his teammates and then assistant coaches restrained from going back and he immediately said that this fan in question this super fan had called him the n-word that's a mitigating circumstance to the games he was suspended. Now, the, the fan said, no, I did not use that word in the statement the fan made. And as you said, he said, no, I only called him a piece of whatever. But I need your opinion on this. Which side do you take? Which do you believe? And if you do believe that this fan uttered the N-word, does that slightly justify crossing that imaginary line between the court and the stands and going into the stands to put your hands on a man? 
That's the question here. I, I'm wondering if the, the Big 12 said, hey, the N-word was uttered, and so we're going to lessen the suspension because the N-word was used. My response to that is, A, I do not believe the man said that because the sound clearly, you clearly heard him saying, you're a piece of you know what. If he had uttered the N-word, I think we would have heard that too. We did not. I certainly think that it would have been plastered all over national television. It was not. Number two, even if the word was said, there are a multitude of options you had. You could have gotten in his face. You could have called the official over. You could have been a lot of things without having to put your hands on somebody. And that's where we're going here. You have to understand. And when I gave this speech last night at SMU, Skip, by the way, they say hello. hello the bottom line is this. The bottom line is this, Skip Bayless. This man, Mr. Orr, he's got his money, got his house, got a mortgage. He's lived his life. Marcus Smart has a future. And all of these folks within the African-American community that's sitting there talking about and trying to explain and justify things, I don't hear anybody standing up offering to pay Marcus Smart's bills in the event that he loses out on money big time because of his actions and ultimately how it characterizes him. That's the issue here. Regardless of what was said to him, you can react in an emotional and volatile way without actually putting your hands on somebody to bring attention to the insult and the, and the potential epithet that was, that was aimed at you without putting your hands on somebody. That can never be tolerated.